All right, in today's video, we're going to be talking about something called percent composition. And we're also going to learn about two different types of formulas that we sometimes hear of called empirical formulas and molecular formulas. So our objectives for today is, first of all, we're going to be using a chemical formula, and we're going to determine what's called the percent by mass of each element in that formula. And then we're going to talk about the difference between the empirical and the molecular formulas. And then we're going to be able to convert between the two. So first of all, percent composition, sometimes referred to as percent composition. Sometimes you'll also see this term percent by mass. Another way you actually might also see it written is you might also see it written as just called the mass percent. That's a C, not an E right there. So all three of those things mean the same thing. It is the mass of each element in a compound divided by the entire mass of the compound. So you calculate it simply by dividing the mass of that element, how many there are of that element by its mass, divided by the total mass, and then multiplying by 100. So for example, I might ask you a question such as, what is the mass percent? See, there I am using that term already. What is the mass percent of hydrogen in hydrogen peroxide, H2O2? So to solve that, we need to, first of all, we need to determine the mass of the entire uh, molecule there, H2O2. So we would go to the periodic table, and just like how we've done before, the mass of hydrogen is 1, and there's 2 of them. So the mass of hydrogen is 2. The mass of oxygen is 16, and there's 2 of those. So 16 times 2 is 32. So the whole mass of the molecule is 34 grams per mole. And so if we want to know the percent of that mass that's or excuse me, hydrogen, then we're just going to take the mass of hydrogen, 2, and we're going to divide it by the total mass, 34. And so what that ends up looking like is you've got 2 on the top, you've got 34 on the bottom, and then again, to get a percentage, you've got to multiply by 100. So we're going to take 2, I've got my calculator here, 2 divided by 34, <clears throat> and then I'm going to multiply by 100, and I get an answer of 5.88%. Now you'll notice there's, they don't give us any initial numbers, so I'm not worried about significant figures here. And then what about oxygen? If we wanted to know the percent by mass, again, notice I, again I, I try to use all three of those terms interchangeably so that you're familiar with all three of them. So what is a percent by mass? Well, we figured out that the mass of oxygen is 32, and we're going to divide that again by the total mass times it by 100, 32 divided by 34, again, times 100 is 94.12%. Now you'll notice that once we're done with this, if we end up getting the percent for each atom within that molecule, you'll notice that 5.88% and the 94.12% they are going to add up, either they're going to be exactly 100% or they're going to be really, really close, like 99.99. Uh, and sometimes you'll be just a tiny bit off like that, uh, just because of the way rounding works. Okay, so here's another example. It says calculate the percent by mass of hydrogen, phosphorus, and oxygen in the phosphoric acid molecule H3PO4. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the mass of the entire thing. So hydrogen has a mass of 1, and there's 3 of them, so that's 3. Phosphorus has a mass of 31, and oxygen has a mass of 16, and there's 4 of them, so 16 times 4 is 64. So our total mass is, let's add those three numbers up, 3 plus 31 is 34, 34 plus 64 is 98. So our total mass for H3PO4 is 98 grams per mole. So then what is the percent of that mass? What, what percent is hydrogen? Well, there's our hydrogen mass. Divide that by 98 times 100. So we're going to take 3 divided by 98 times 100 equals 
3.06% hydrogen. And then for the phosphorus, 31 divided by 98 times 100. 98 times 100 equals 31.63%. And then for oxygen, 64 divided by 98 times 100. 64 divided by 98 times 100 equals 65.31% oxygen. This one was phosphorus, and here was our hydrogen. Now again, if we add those three up, 3.06 plus 31.63 plus 65.31, I get an answer, in this case, exactly equal to 100%. So it's a good thing to do. If you, if you end up having to do this for all of them, one thing you can do at the end when you're all finished is just multiply or add them all together and make sure that you get really, really close, if not exactly equal to 100%. Okay, so what might a multiple choice question look like? Here's a question that says, which of the following molecules has a mass percent of oxygen equal to 48%? So there's no real simple way to do this. Uh, the best way to do it is just to basically start. It's, you can just randomly guess. But we'll just start with letter A. And we'll just figure out what is the percent of oxygen in this compound. Well, oxygen, again, weighs 16. Chromium, going to the periodic table, looks like has a mass of 52. So we're going to take, to figure out the mass percent of oxygen, we're going to take 16, which is the oxygen part, over the total mass. Now, here's where, where a mistake often comes in. Sometimes students will just write 52 on the bottom. Remember, that number on the bottom has to be the total mass of the whole thing. So 16 over 52 would be incorrect. It's got to be 16 over the 68. Now, uh, when you multiply that out, we're going to times it by 100. 16 divided by 68 times 100 equals 23.5 percent. Okay, so basically what we're looking for is we're looking for an answer that's 48 percent. So then this is, again, there's no, hopefully you realize, okay, that's a pretty small number. Maybe I'll jump up to a higher one. Maybe I'll do letter C instead of doing B. Now the answer could be B. You just don't know. So basically here, we're just trying to guess and see which one it could possibly be. So on CRO3, letter C, again, the oxygen weighs 48, 16 times 3 of them. The total mass now is the chromium, 52, plus the 48 equals 100. And hopefully you realize that 48 divided by 100 equals, four, well, times 100 equals 48%. So letter C is your correct answer on that one. Now, let's uh, switch gears here for just a minute, and then we're going to kind of bring it all together, back together again. Sometimes when we talk about the formula of something, we can talk about it in two different ways. When we talk about the chemical formula for glucose, for example, what we're really talking about is what's called the molecular formula. And the molecular formula is just that. It's the formula that is used to show the exact amount the exact amount of each atom in a compound. So it's the actual formula for that compound. For example, here is the actual formula for glucose, C6H12O6. Here is the actual formula for hydrogen peroxide. Here's the actual formula for acetic acid. And this is the actual formula for nitrogen trifluoride. Okay. Now, sometimes you can have a formula that's written where instead of writing the exact amount, instead of the six hydrogens or the six carbons, the 12 hydrogens and the six oxygens, you have a formula that only shows the ratio of each atom in a compound. And a lot of times it's not the actual formula. These are the actual formulas. These down here are not. Now, this is an actual formula. That's formaldehyde. But if we're talking about the empirical formula for glucose, 
um, it's not this. And we're going to see, how do you go? How do you go from this to this? Okay, so if you have the molecular formula and you are asked to get the empirical formula, to convert, you divide each subscript. So let's come back here. The subscripts are these little numbers down here. Remember that when we balance equations, when the number that goes in the front out here, when you're balancing an equation, that's called the coefficient. Then the little numbers down here in the corners, those are called the subscripts. So you divide each subscript by the largest whole number that all of the subscripts are divisible by. So if we come back here to our previous slide, here are the three subscripts in glucose. When we are looking for that empirical formula, we have to think what is the largest number that all three of these numbers are divisible by? And obviously in this case it is six. So that means we're going to divide each subscript by the number six. So six divided by six is one. Twelve divided by six is two which is where that 2 came from. And then 6 divided by 6 again is 1. So down here we can see this is the empirical formula for glucose, CH2O. Okay, on H2O2, obviously the biggest number that will divide into both of them is 2. So basically the 2's just cancel each other out and you end up with HO. On C2H4O2, the biggest number obviously is 2. So again, you'll notice that both of these compounds, even though they're very different, this one's sugar, this one is basically the active ingredient in vinegar, uh, their empirical formulas are actually the same, but the molecular formulas, the actual formulas for them, are very different. Now sometimes you find that the empirical formula is actually the same as the molecular formula. There's no way that you can reduce NF3 because it doesn't have any numbers that both of them will divide into other than one. And anytime you have that, anytime you have one of your atoms that there's only one of, like the nitrogen in this case, you're not going to have a different empirical formula because that one cannot be reduced to anything less. So in this case, the molecular formula and the empirical formula are the same thing. Okay, now sometimes you're going to, they will give you the empirical formula. So basically you're going to start with this and they're going to ask you to find this. The problem is, is you don't have enough information to do that without them giving you more. Because if they just say CH2O, what's the molecular formula? Well, it could be this one, but it could also be this one. And so they have to give you a little bit more information. So to convert from the empirical formula, the ratio one, to the molecular formula, the real one, you must be given the molar mass of the, of the molecular formula. Okay, if they don't give that to you, you, there's no way you can determine which molecular formula it's going to do, which one it's going to be. So to do that, you divide the molar mass of the molecular formula. So again, this will be given to you. They have to provide you with that information. You divide the molar mass of the empirical formula by the molar mass, or excuse me, of the molecular formula by the molar mass of the empirical formula. And then the answer that you get is the number you multiply each subscript by in the empirical formula. So let me show you what I mean by that. Okay? So it says a compound with an empirical formula of C3H4O3 has a molar mass of 264 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula of the compound? So again, we, we're starting with the empirical formula and they're asking us for the molecular formula. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to figure out what is the molar mass of the empirical formula. So three carbons, carbon weighs 12, 12, 12 times 3 is 36. Hydrogen weighs 1 and there's four of them, so that's just four. And there's three oxygens, each of which weighs 16. 16 times 3 is 48. So our total mass is 36 plus 4 is 40. 40 plus 48 is 88. So the empirical formula has a mass of 88 grams per mole. The molecular formula is telling us, though, that the mass is 264 grams per mole. So in this case, we're going to take 264 and we're going to divide it 
So again, this is the, the molar mass of the molecular formula. This is the molar mass of the empirical formula. And again, you can write those words out. I just don't have enough room. 264 divided by 88 is equal to 3. And so what that means is for each of these subscripts here, we have to multiply each of those numbers by 3. So basically, it's kind of like the distributive property, I believe is what they call it in math. So this 3 has to go to here, to here, and to here. So our molecular formula is going to be C9H12O9. And that will have a mass of 264 grams per mole. 108 plus 12 plus 144 equals 264. Okay, let's look at one more example. C5H9 is the empirical formula for a compound with a molar mass of 138 grams per mole. What is the molecular formula of the compound? Let me make one more comment on this one before we jump into that one. Um, a lot of times you might have, like using one from before, like when we had CH2O, remember that if you have CH2O and you multiply that by 3, remember that even though there's no actual number written here or here, we, that, that number is still a 1. So if you, had to, if you had CH2O and you had to multiply it by 3, your final answer would be C3 h six o three so if there's a number if there's not a number written here in the subscript area just remember that that number actually is a one all right so let's take a look at this one c5 h9 uh, carbon has a mass of 12 12 times 5 is 60 hydrogen a mass of one so that gives us a grand total of 69 grams per mole we know that the molar mass of the, of the molecular formula has a mass of 138. So we're going to take 138, divide it by 69, and we get an answer of 2. So again, that means we have to multiply every subscript in that formula by 2. So C5H9 equals C10H18. And that is our molecular formula for that compound. All right, so please go on to the next assignment, and then we'll go from there.